What has string theory given us? What is it good for? I'm aware I am not a string theorist. I am not a high energy physicist. So I'm a little bit of an outsider looking in, but I'm a cosmologist and I welcome questions and criticisms of my own discipline. I'm, I'm, I welcome someone up walking up and saying, Hey, what are we, what are we getting out of all this cosmology stuff? What are we learning about the universe? And, and you know, I'll give all the, like, here's the things we learned. Here's some are open problems we're trying to understand. And I'll let you be the judge. Maybe I should judge myself. I don't know. So when it comes to string theory, it's been a long time, hasn't it? String theory first got going in the 1960s. It's been 60 years of development and interest. And sometimes there'd be flurries of excitement and lots of people calling these like uh, revolutions in string theory. And then it dies down, almost fades away. And then another burst of life. And yet we don't have a string theory. We don't have a final theory. We don't have a set of equations that we can put on a t-shirt and say, yep, that's how the universe works. That's string theory. We don't have that. We only have approximations, guesses that we hope resemble the actual thing, but the actual thing is just too dang difficult to the point that most string theorists have abandoned trying to actually solve string theory and develop a theory of gravity or a unified theory of all the forces of nature. Most string theorists just don't work on it anymore. It's too hard. Instead, we have, we're forced to appeal to things like the anthropic principle in the landscape and saying like, yep, um, string theory can't predict our universe, it predicts all the universes, and we live in this one because if physics were different, we wouldn't be alive. And that's really unsatisfying. What does string theory have going for it? Well, it's had a lot of staying power, and it's had a lot of staying power for a lot of reasons. One, it does naturally include quantum gravity. Like if you're trying to understand the quantum nature of gravity, string theory has it built in. In. And so you don't exactly have a lot of other options, especially more natural ones. Like you're not forcing anything on it. It's just there. It's string theory is like, here I am and here's quantum gravity in the backseat. Okay. Another very intriguing property of string theory is that it doesn't have any tunable parameters. Like when we look at the standard model of particle physics, the standard model doesn't know about the electron mass. It doesn't know about the speed of light. You have to put those numbers in by hand based on running experiments in order to get all the math to actually work in your standard model. Seems kind of awkward. I'll admit it's kind of awkward and we, we're not exactly comfortable with it. String theory is supposed to provide all those numbers. It's a theory of everything. It's a, supposed to provide the electron mass. It's supposed to provide the strength of gravity and the speed of light just naturally in the equations. It hasn't. It hasn't actually demonstrated that yet because we don't have a string theory, but, you know, it, it wants to be that. This correspondence, the ADS-CFD correspondence, might end up being incredibly useful, just a very rich, powerful toolkit for, for solving various problems that we face in the real world. And that's never a bad thing. It might be telling us something really interesting about black holes and the potential black hole information paradox. You know, it, it does provide a resolution to that, which, which might unlock some even deeper secrets of the universe. There's a lot of rich mathematics in it. Which, you know, math for the sake of math is pretty awesome. Never going to turn that down. Go mathematicians. It's uh, it taught us a lot about supersymmetries and dualities and, and, and these very deeply intuitive but very powerful physical concepts that have applications much outside of string theory, like supersymmetry is... You know, an idea that is now incorporated into extensions of physics beyond the standard model. So, like, there's stuff, right? But the question is, do we keep going? Is it Has it been worth it? 
In my opinion, string theory is on a little bit of thin ice nowadays. Obviously, other some people will disagree. Um, really, the lack of detecting supersymmetry in the Large Hadron Collider is a big problem. It hasn't ruled out supersymmetry, but it's ruled out a lot of models, a lot of versions of supersymmetry. And string theory needs supersymmetry in a big way. I mean, and there's possible ways around supersymmetry, but it just gets really awkward really fast. Without supersymmetry, string theory is just, it's just, it's a hard sell because supersymmetry is what allows string theory to be a theory of all the things. If you don't have supersymmetry, it's just a theory of, of the force particles, which is fine, which is really cool, but not a theory of everything. String theory has failed to provide an actual testable workable theory. There is no direct experiment for string theory. And the Kármán argument is that, oh, 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 if you had a particle collider powerful enough that could reach powerful, high enough energies, the energy scales of quantum gravity, you could reach that Planck energy, whatever, then you could actually test string theory because that's the domain of the unified gravity. It's all well up here at these ridiculous energy scales. Uh, that's not true. It's not true because we don't have a string theory. We have approximations to a string theory. We don't have anything that could tell you what you will find at those extreme energies. So you run the experiment and you're like, did, what, did you get it right or not? Here's the answer. And then in string theory, you're like, well, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I hadn't finished answering the question yet. Why has string theory stuck on all of the decades? Well, it's interesting. Like I, I talked about, there's some institutional bias going on. Like if, if, if big prominent physicists are into it and you're a young physicist and you want to do theoretical physics, you're, you're probably going to dabble in string theory. Just because, you know, it gets your paper cited. You get invited to all the best parties. Uh, it has caught fire in the public imagination. Like more people know about string theory than they know about quantum field theory. And which is very worrying to me because quantum field theory is a big deal. Me personally, I've had a complicated relationship with string theory. I was a big fan of it for a while. And my interest has waned over the years just because it's like, okay, I've known about string theory for like 20 years now. And what have you got? Is string theory even science? People go argue back and forth along these lines. Of course, science is a long and rich history in exploring hypothetical ideas without connecting to experiment. That's part of the job. But eventually you do connect to experiment or you just fade away because there's no way of telling if you're right. That's the whole point it's to judge if things are right or not using the evidence. And if we can't use evidence to judge you, then we're not really doing science. Me personally, how long can a research program go on for without making direct connection to the evidence or making testable predictions? Are we already past that point when it comes to string theory? Are we a few years out? Do we give it another 10 years, see what we get? Do we let ADS CFT, you know, play around a little bit, see if it's useful? I don't think string theory is worth cutting off completely. I think we should keep investing. There's some interesting stuff there, like the whole quantum gravity stuff, the correspondence is interesting. Like there's there's some nuggets in there that, you know, make you pause and go, hmm, that's pretty interesting. Those are worth considering, but I really do think it's time now that we really start investing and supporting and exploring non-string theory ideas for quantum gravity. I don't know what those are because I'm just a poor country astrophysicist, but I think it's time to diversify our portfolio. Thank you so much for joining me us on this ridiculous voyage across string theory. I hope you enjoyed it. And next time, uh, let's not talk about string theory. Thank you so much. Don't forget to go to patreon.com slash PM Sutter. Uh, your contributions really help. And like, share, subscribe, do the YouTube thing, make some comments, whatever you do.